Hello, my name is Reese, and welcome to the Bookshop Crawl UK channel. Today, we will be talking to the brilliant staff at Bookish. Located in the heart of Wales in the beautiful town of Crickarrel, Bookish opened in 2010. It is an award-winning indie bookshop with its mind and soul set on its community endeavours. As well as hosting book clubs, discussion groups, game nights and quizzes, Bookish also runs the Crickarrel Literacy Festival and is also the official bookshop of the Green Man Festival. Um, Emma, Kreisel, uh, Diochen Val, and welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Diochen oh, Val. So nice to be here. Uh, so tell us just a little bit about Bookish and about why you chose Crickarrel as its location. Was there a specific reason? Well, I wanted to move back to Wales as I'm from Wales originally and I was living in Brighton. So moved back. Um, when I had my very early midlife crisis and sold my, my first surveying business, um, the only thing I could think of doing was opening a bookshop. Um, and it just felt right, it being in Krakow, because it's a really lovely market town. It's only really small, we've only got a population of 2,000. But I just felt that it had a real indie vibe about it, really lovely community. Um, it's on the A40, so lots of people pass by and lots of people have memories of staying in and around Crickhow, whether that's Duke of Edinburgh or staying with family members. So it just felt right. It was very much a gut feel. Um, and yeah, we opened in 2010 at a smaller premises. We moved to a larger premises four doors down in 2017 and haven't really looked back. So now we're, we're a strong book selling team of seven um and yeah it's it's changed hugely in the 12 years that we've been on the high street but that's to the good i think than anything else hmm. so what is it like being the only because oh, obviously i um i i lived in wales quite a few years ago now uh, i have been to crickarrel before um and I, like you said it's not a particularly very big area what's it like being the only bookshop in the town have you sort of felt sort of uh, the community coming around you supporting you and it's great. Um, it means that we can be a real community hub, uh, which is always what we wanted to do. Make sure that, as, as you said, we host lots of book, book clubs. I think there's three book clubs at the moment. We've got a writing group. We host quizzes, games nights. But also because we've got the cafe element of it, we get lots of regular groups of people on Thursday mornings. We have, uh, which we do haven't organised. They've organised themselves. Um, and it just means that when anything happens in the town, for example, when we had that horrendous flooding back in 20 Crickhowers and Island, we were able to help coordinate, um, help really, and help to, to work within our local community with everybody that, that's around. And it also means that we've got really close links to our local high school, which is at the bottom of the lane, our local primary schools. We, we see the kids kind of come up from primary school to then revising for their GCSEs in the cafe and coming to us as sixth formers and then asking for jobs. So it's all about being a community hub. It's always been about being more than just a book and always been about just being behind the till selling books. Mm. It's been about the, the town and the little area and being a big part of that and uh, that's been one of the best things it sounds idyllic if i'm humbly honest uh your 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 dream of giving up your business uh your previous your previous roles selling up and opening up a bookshop it sounds beautiful um it's, <laughs> maybe one day for myself <laughs> um but uh, <laughs> you, you, i know that i feel really lucky how, how did you sort of uh over the last couple of years, obviously, everyone's been affected in the bookish in book industry um, because of COVID, because of the uh, things that have been going on. Um, but your social media presence really has helped quite a lot, I feel. Um, you've done an awful lot online. Um, what's been some of your favourite things that you've actually done over the last few years uh, in amongst all of the sort of madness that's been going on? Um, I think right at the start of the pandemic, it was definitely setting up the At Home Before Indies, the online events, um, because that firstly allowed us to carry on doing events and still pop up in people's homes and keep it at the forefront of people's minds. But it also allowed us to do something for others um, to kind of keep everybody entertained. It was a bit collaborative project with Booker and Lingham's and Forum Books but also it was my support group. So we would pretty much talk every single day and we got you know, each other through the pandemic. And it was 
fantastic to be able to work with other bookshops, be able to promote what we were doing online um, and do that out on Facebook for free. Um, and that, yeah, just, just possibilities. We could, when we put our minds together, pretty much do anything. Um, that, was, that was amazing. Um, and the support that we had of people, we started off, I think, with about 6,000 followers on Twitter. I think we've got just over 21,000 now. And that's been phenomenal. I lived on Twitter for most of 2020, just trying to desperately <laughs> pedal books. And, and you know, that was my little support group as well. We all kind of spoke to each other and made sure everybody was OK. Book Twitter is lovely. Um, and then I think going on to last year, when we could really mobilise all of those thousand people um, it was the Marcus crowdfunder that we did before the World Cup, and we raised just under ten grand. Um, Macmillan helped us and um, matched that funding, so we got thousands and thousands of copies of that book into into Welsh primary and secondary schools, so year six and seven. Um, and a lot of in a lot of cases, that was the only time some of those children had ever owned a book at home to take home for themselves so that had a really big impact and it helped us also start lots of conversations with schools within Wales and the Marsh Valleys um, and we've learned so much and we're working on lots of projects now with the schools um, and I hadn't realised I always realised you know there are real pockets of poverty within Wales but I hadn't realised that impacted on on reading mm. so we're working there so that's been fantastic and then last year social media helped us by building just by crowdfunding within 10 days and um, we reached our target so yeah the, the power of social media has been a bit of a phenomenon to me but it's all the way through it's kind of made sure that I don't feel like I'm alone in it because there's always somebody to talk to sleep. so so yeah it's been amazing that's it's really good to hear I I am particularly impressed with your ability in the local areas to support the, the, the project that you did with the schools uh, where you provided all those books that you've just mentioned. Um, when that was running on social media, it was incredible just to see it. It literally went like wildfire. It was um, just uh, it watching watching Twitter explode almost. Uh, bookish people around the globe sort of uh, supporting you it was beautiful to see. So um, outside of yourselves, yeah. obviously, are there any other bookshops that you particularly like, uh, that, that are your particular favourites? Uh, it doesn't have to be in the Wales, in Wales but uh, what would you say, uh, is there a particular bookshop that you thought before you opened Bookish, was there somewhere that you thought, actually, I'd love that bookshop? You can give more than I one think if you always, want. It's always Mr B's. Sorry, it's always been Mr B's in Bath. I don't, I think that, that's the pinnacle of the bookshop innovative thinking um and the team are amazing but you know they're a, they're a phenomenon so I, I think it's really really difficult within the book trade because we're all such good friends mm. so I've got lots of favorites for lots of different reasons every time I go on holiday where I go we always have to go to a bookshop even if I have to drive out of the way to go there so it would be probably easier. I mean, Mr. B's was always the shop that I knew about before we opened, although they didn't open too much, you know, before us. Hmm. Um, but in terms of bookshops, I want to visit. I go to Brooklyn and visit Books and Magic after mm -hmm. meeting Emma Straub. I just think that that's, looks amazing. I haven't been to my friend Helen's um, two new bookshops in, you know, the Bound in Whitley Bay and the Accidental Bookshop. Um, and I just want to go to, to everybody's bookshops, really, because every bookshop has a story behind it with all of their different owners. And there's so many different ideas and so much to learn that I can't really mention a couple of names, but I don't think I can say that there's a favourite. No, that's good. That's 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 uh, pretty much what we get from most people when we ask that question. It's a bit of a mean question. So, <laughs> uh, um and and I completely agree, understand what you mean by Mr. B's. Um, we've done bookshop calls in Bath. Uh, we've done two bookshop calls in Bath over the last uh, five years, and um, everybody's been enamoured by that. It's beautiful. It's such a um, from the moment you walk in, get offered tea. It's like um, a surreal experience almost. It's not the sort of shop you expect. Um, and then when you're, I'm have a feeling that's sort of why you yourselves have uh, 
been uh, given so many awards over recent years um simply the the way that you come across and the way that uh the the heart that you put into your bookshop it's really is quite uh beautiful to see so it's um good that there uh, that you've managed to uh, create this uh, uh this in uh, a small village in wales effectively um thank you your, that's very nice to hear uh, our last question is recommendations um have you got any particular recommendations of books that are coming up soon or that you would recommend that you would like to give to our readers uh listeners sorry not readers <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think the book that I have been practically throwing at everybody's that comes in through the shop has been um, The Lincoln Highway by Amatol, such a map of his writing. Um, I just think it is perfect for the book and I really, really love it and I love the characters. Mm. Um, and then I think there have been some ast astonishing debuts over the last year. Um, I really, really loved... Cecily by Annie Garthway as a historical book. I thought that was fantastic. And I loved hearing her about, you know, thinking about the book's premise a long time ago and finding it. And also the same for that Green Eyed Girl by Julia and Moylan. Um, but again, you know, there's always going to be standouts. And it's also sometimes it's the author's story behind the book that kind of gives you that connection as well. Um, and wants the, to make you find out more about how they write and what they write and what drives them as writers. So that's been fascinating. Um, yet to interview Amartol because he is in New York, but you never know who's going to come over. <laughs> We're very lucky that we, um, we are near Hay, so a lot of authors come over for the festival. Mm. So maybe... But uh, yeah, in terms of writing, that he's definitely been my favourite of recent years. Very good. That's a good couple of choices. Uh, um, the um, festivals that you run, uh, uh, is it just the one festival or do you actually take part in running the uh, um, uh, the Green Man Festival as well? No, no, we just, um, we pop up at the Green Man Festival uh, as the, the bookseller and the same as Ab Ab Abergavenny Food Festival now we took over last year there. Mm -hmm. We've been doing Green Man for about seven years. And then Crick Cow Literary Festival at the moment, we're taking a break this year um but we are looking at kind of relaunching it in 2023 in a slightly different format so it's a case to watch this space on on the festival front definitely very good is that because i think green man's coming up isn't it if i remember correctly or is that gone? yeah it's in august it is in august yeah, yeah. it's in august yeah so great lineup again can't wait to sell books in a field um, and, and, you know, a lot of people that come to Crick, Crick Howell to Green Man and have been coming for the past, I think it's the 20th anniversary this year. You know, a lot of them are our customers from all over the UK and have supported us throughout the pandemic because they know Crick Howell and they come into the bookshop and they come into the cafe. So, um, yeah, that's been fantastic. Brilliant to hear. It's so nice to hear all of these events that are starting to come back to life after um, what has been a, a very challenging few years for everybody um so really good to hear uh, well look emma thank you very much for your time thank you for spending a little bit of time with us today we're talking about books and about your bookshop really is appreciated um and i wish you well for the rest of the year thank you so much for having me